Welcome, everyone. We're on episode seven of the IAFM podcast. Today, we're so lucky we have Ashley Langer from Business Socialistas here with us. Um, so welcome, Ashley. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I've been so excited. We had to postpone once, and now I'm so glad that we finally nailed the date down because um, you're just such good energy. You're such good people, and I just want everyone to, you know, get to know you a little bit more outside of what they see on your channel or Thank if they've you. been lucky enough to go to your events. Oh, so <laughs> so <laughs> let's start at the let's start at the beginning. Sure. Actually, um first let's introduce your your business. Let's tell us what you do in general and then let's get into like the nitty gritty of it. Sure. So um, my name is Ashley Langer. I run Business Socialistas and I host networking events and workshops for female entrepreneurs. I'm also um, starting to coach on the side now with um, confidence, community and connection, which are some of the things that I really foster within Socialistas. And I've been doing it for almost a year and a half now. I started my Instagram January 2020. 2021. I lied. 2021. 2021. Yeah. Because yeah. before that, what you were, you've always been in this kind of like women's or networking, you know, um, field. So how yeah. did you transition from what, what was that like something that you had inherited from someone else, whatever you were doing before, and now you shifted into your own like baby? Yeah. So uh, my experience is actually super corporate. So I started, um, like my professional career actually as a personal assistant with heavy event planning um, back in 2007, let's say. And yeah. then I worked there for three, four years. And then I got a job um, in a finance company working on the marketing team, doing marketing events, all the travel, the materials and networking events um, for private equity yeah. men um, that actually focus on power plants. So what I was doing then is a little different than 150 fun women in a room, but right. um, I got a lot of experience, um, kind of the art of putting people together and making a great event that flows. And I'm really into like marketing materials and yeah. the aesthetics of that type of stuff. So um, when I became a stay-at-home mom, I left my job because yeah. this wasn't going to leave my baby for 10 hours a day. I and then... Then, then I actually became a health coach and really? you have like a, a background in like nutrition. Like how did that, how did that come about? Nope. I'm super passionate about health and nutrition and um, movement. So I wanted, I wanted to like change my career. I was lucky enough to be able to do so. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, but I was like, well, I'm really passionate about this. I'm just going to take the course. And I loved it. But when I went to launch a coaching business, I was like lost in the sauce. Yeah. Like straight it's up. Not even like, oh, I'm going to do this today. You know? No. Yeah, I so hear you. Lost in the sauce. I don't have friends that are entrepreneurs, especially then. Um, and I like didn't know where to start, where to begin. I didn't have any place to find referrals. And of course, you're like Googling and on social media and it gets so crowded and complicated and there's so many voices and I was so overwhelmed and I knew a girl on I was living in Queens at the time and I knew a girl on Long Island who had started babes in business that's what it was right and they do networking events and I reached out to her and in, in this now like all this time forward now I'm moving to Connecticut which is um, October 2020 and I had my second child and then I'm moving to Connecticut and I'm like so I grew up in Connecticut I yeah. moved around Connecticut a lot and so I know people from all over the state and so I had this thought I'm like what if I started a babes in business here I could learn more about business I could use all my contacts from all over the state I right. can make some friends Right. Like what a good way to have like an excuse to like pop into people's lives. Right. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, so I reached out to her. I found out more about it. It was a franchise. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, all right, you want to know what I've got the extra, it was a pandemic. I'm like, I'm just going to start the Instagram and see what happens. Right. You know, throw spaghetti at the wall. Let's see if it sticks like what? casual. Why not? And it's stuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> so into it so I'm like, Whoa. Like, <laughs> everyone was so into the idea uh and like one of my big missions is like 
over time, I think networking and workshops and growing your business has become like this stale thing where you're like stuck at a coffee shop sitting next to a person with a bagel. And you're like, I have to cultivate this conversation. Right. What if I hate them? They're, du- yeah. they're a dud, half, you know, yeah. happen. Yeah. And it then does happen. it does happen or you're just not vibing or like, you know, you're looking for two different, whatever it is. And it's like, you're stuck. And yeah. so and I love a good time. Like I'm the good time girl. So I wanted to do something that was super fun and outlandish and we could like get dressed up and have it be like a girl's night too. And like do all these things while also growing your business and connecting with other people and all those magical things. So I started the Instagram account and it was the pandemic. So I couldn't throw an event. So I just started the Instagram and that was in January. And then in June, I hosted my first event which was kind of like this, like coming out party for all events. Cause it was like the right. first time I was like leaving their house. Yeah. Um, which probably worked in my favor a little bit. Um, oh, sure. People were ready, you know, were ready. yeah. Like all these, you know, it's been beautiful because the pandemic did yield so many new businesses, specifically women, 100%. right. <laughs> who like all of a sudden had this time to, to work on their passion projects, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And so babes in business then like really took off and my events were selling, they're still selling out, but it was like selling out. And I was like, Whoa, like I have to run with this now. I thought this was right. A little something. And how did that transition for you? Like you, you did that for a bit. And then how did, what happened that made you think, okay, I've got this, I got a handle on, on how this kind of goes, but I wanted to make it my own. Like what were there things that you just under the franchise couldn't do or wanted to do? And then you, you know, you kind of stepped away and started business socialistas. Number one, I felt like a fraud. No, of all people, <laughs> you're like um, the most honest person out I, Well, they're, they're, that's me being honest, right? Yeah. Like, there yeah. it is. Um, yeah. I felt a little bit like I was pushing everyone to um, be independent, chase your dreams, right. um, try something new, all these things. And I was like, almost having a backup. Like it wasn't mine. It right. wasn't mine. And that I also it, to yeah. that point, um, when I started thinking about the brand that I was building, because right. all the base and business locations are different. Um, and I'm me. And all the things that I was doing, and I wasn't getting, honestly, a lot of value or support from the Babes in Business franchise. So it was really me. And I'm like, this is really me. This isn't Babes in Business. This is me. Like, I'm the social maven. Like, I'm that person. That's my personality, my content, my blood, sweat, my tears. Like, my going out and networking and doing, that was like me. Yeah. And so I was like, this doesn't really make sense to be paying someone else all this money when yeah. like, I'm really, I'm really doing it. And I also wanted the freedom to make my own deals, my own business decisions. Yeah. And they're Absolutely. very strict on that. And I was like, I want, if I want to give someone a break, I want to give someone a break. If I want to, you know, Great. start coaching on the side, like I'm starting to do, like, I want to be able to do that and not have to owe someone something. So of um, I left the brand and I had lots of, it's, we're not on bad terms. I had lots of conversations with her just like this, where I was just like letting her know, I want to do more. This is what I think and feel. How can we make it work? Because I think Babes in Business is like the best name of all time, honestly. I do. Um, and it, we, it just, it didn't work. So I started my own thing. I started Business Socialistas and oh. not much change. Also a great name. <laughs> Thank you. That was hard also because it was like once I was leaving, it was like, oh shit, I gotta come up with a name real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is hard. <laughs> it yeah, it's not as easy as you think. Yeah, like it's everything not. comes in, it's like, what's the name? What's my like visual brand look like? Yeah. You know, what what's the name? How am I gonna present <laughs> myself to the, you know, because it's a it's a big deal. It's, it's a big, big deal. deal. Well, it becomes your whole identity, you know, like it, and it's so committal because you don't want to change your name 10 times. Like you gotta like. Yep. You got to go. You got to choose it and go. Um, So then I changed the name, but it was just like more of the same. I think everyone like was receptive to it and understood. And yeah, if anything, I remember like it felt like it felt like onto bigger and better things. It's just like more power to this, like taking, you know, so it just kind of it was a natural transition from an outsider, like, you know, one of your followers looking in. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) 
Thank you. I love it. So Thanks. where do you get, because I mean, anyone out there who follows um, Ash <laughs> online, like your content is awesome. Like it's Thank so you. like you're, you're goofy, you're fun. Like it, it's just so relatable, you know? You. And so where, where do you get your inspiration for the types of stuff that you put out there? Because it's, while it is funny and, 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 and silly sometimes it's real and it's actually, it's educating people, it's adding value. So how do you keep up with everything? Cause there must be a lot. I mean, there is a lot that people want to know when building their. Uh, yeah. Um, I would say like one of the things that I did and that I do regularly, um, because I run out of ideas like everyone else is yeah. I try to keep like a list of things that I think are pain points or jokes that are that that are within my community, like my audience. Like, what are what are people up at night stressing out about? What are we laughing about? Right. Like all these things, and I try to make content working off working off that list essentially. Right. Or you know, and sometimes it starts like I have a message that I want to get out there, so I yeah. got to find the audio for it. I got to work. I got to cultivate it myself and then other times I see something else and I'm like oh no, no 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 this is gonna fit really well with something on my list yeah so I would tell anyone who's like uh, like working on content creation is to like start the list yeah like, what are awesome. the like that's like a great place to like work off of in terms of like building your business like your values your pain points like anything like that that you think is a, and, and, and it has to affect you in order I think to come across authentic. I always work off the list and it, it should make the list from your heart. And I think that it will resonate with the people that you want to attract. And I think that's true. I think a lot of times we also think about like, oh, I'll remember that, you know, like, cause it's oh. so like, oh, it's so brick to forehead, but at the end of the day, it just, it flies out. So I think making well, lists, I I'm all about like checking things off. Like if it's not written down, I will write it down just to check it off because it makes me feel like I've accomplished that. Yeah. I keep it in the notes section of my iPhone. Yeah. Perfect. Cause it's just like, oh, I'll be scrolling and then I'll just like yeah. click over, write it down. Yeah. Um, so that's how I make most of my content. And I really just, you know, I'm outgoing and kind of over the top and in a lot of different ways. Um, so I just try to like embrace that, you know, yeah. and just, just go with it. <laughs> yeah. So um, you mentioned that you've started coaching um, yeah. a little bit. How long have you been doing that now? So I've been doing it on the side for a while where people come to me and they're like, oh, well, a lot of people are first and foremost, you know, my biggest thing are the networking events and yes. people are very intimidated about the word networking. And it's really intimidating for all of us, myself included, to get out there and talk about your business, talk about what you're doing yeah. um, and do that well. So when people would DM me or even comment in Instagram and say like, oh, I got to find a friend. That's like the big thing. It's like everyone needs to come with someone else. Um, their support system. Their you know, support their, system. Their, their comfortable blanket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And while I, I like definitely get it and I'm into the girls night out, I also felt like I wanted people, I want people to be able to come by themselves. And even if you yeah. come with a friend, um, you should still be able to have the confidence to talk about your business. So I would like reach out to them and then we would like be DMing and then I'd be like, oh, let's just jump on a call. And I just started helping people find the confidence to talk about their business, really like fine tune their elevator pitch. Yeah. Um, because that's something that we all kind of like, you know, hiccup on yeah. uh, what to say, yeah. what not to say. Um, and I think a lot of just being prepared with that single sentence can make walking into a networking event so much less terrifying. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it can be it, absolutely. I mean, I had the pleasure of going to your last one, which was awesome. Um, it was at Pinstripes, right? That's the name yep. of the place in Norwalk. And it yep. was just such a fun time. And, it, you know, very relaxed, very chill. And even though, you, you know, you could be there with friends, it felt very comfortable just kind of walking around and just seeing like having the vendor tables there also yeah. to help you break the ice and just, you know, meet, meet new people and um, not feel so intimidated. Because I feel like everyone there felt like they were in the same boat. And yes. something that I found was really helpful, Ashley, I will Ooh. say, was, yeah. um, I thought it was a really nice, it's a detail, but 
it okay. shows your like to me your commitment and your involvement in people's lives it's not just like oh hey i'm throwing an event come over here and talk to people you know <laughs> tell me what it is yeah That's well so i love the just the little note that you did like after you bought your tickets um there was a little note about just like quick tips on you know um fine tune your elevator pitch you know like uh, just like how to prepare how to prepare like three little steps and it was like okay like that's not that bad i can yeah. i can work on this you know and it, it just made it a little more digestible a little bit more like you know approachable yeah it made the whole networking thing not feel so bad it just felt like we're just gonna go hang you know like it, it, yeah. okay i got this yeah. you know well, I think networking is also people are like, what am I supposed to do? Like, am I just meeting people? Am I making friends? Yeah. Um, and I feel like to be successful at a networking event, you have to kind of like plan. I mean, listen, you can just go and chill and maybe that's your vibe for that night. But I also feel like if it's, it's nice to have a plan to know what you're going to say, what you're going to do. Maybe you're looking for something specific or, you know, you're looking for a photographer or you're looking for a new web designer and maybe you won't meet that person that night, but you never know who you're going to meet who will get you to that a person. Connection. Right. Yeah, just a connection. Maybe you make a friend, maybe you make a business bestie, maybe yeah. you make a, a business partner or a future referral, like just getting out there in a personal way, just, being yourself and just talking about your brand is so powerful because pe it, people will remember that. People remember people and feelings and yes. connection. Yes. That's, that's what we're buying. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, people will remember how you made them feel. So absolutely. it's also, you know, I find that I go into those events like hoping to, like on the in a Fairfield Minute side, right? I go in. But I'm not out there like I'm like I'm hunting for advertisers <laughs> or I'm hunting for this and that. You know, yeah. I find that building connections with people is so much more important. Mm -hmm. Um, because and, and approaching it that way for me takes the stress out that I'm just going out because I'm not I'm not the kind of person as much as I you know I might come off like whatever you know online you know I tend to be pretty like quiet and reserved otherwise talk and about this, like, Chris is more of going yeah yeah he yeah. he is and he'll like talk your ear off forever it yeah. takes a lot for me to like sure. go out there and put myself out there but once I do it's so nice because for me the connections and building you know little friendships here and there yeah. to me that's that's so much more important and I feel like the people that I connect with get that and feel even feel more comfortable with me because of that. And then relationships grow the way that they're meant to grow. I feel like when we start trying to force things to happen, yep. that just causes stress, at least with me, like it causes stress inside of me. And I'm worried that that's going to reflect out. And I'm just going to be like this tense, like nervous Nelly the whole time and accomplish yeah. nothing. It's not good business energy. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that connection, you know, and that's a lot of what people talk about, like social media sales, sales is like when you, when you put out content that yeah. people connect to, it converts. I think there's yes. like a sense about that, right? Is it's kind of like, even when you're not selling, you're just kind of like, oh yeah, that person gets me. Like right. Paula, she understands me. Like we are sisters from another life, like, or even just like, she was so kind. Like, I want to be around her more, learn more from her. Like, what is she up to? Or like, God, I can't wait to check out their magazine. Like, God, right. like, you know, like, just like yeah. those feelings are so powerful for sales or referrals or just like moving collaborations, like what we're doing now. Right. Like, absolutely. And I find that, um, you know, in conversations I was having with other people, I think it was literally yesterday. It's just like, I like to think that anyone can learn from anyone, you know? So yeah. speaking, even like think about within your own, like if you work for a company, you know, you're not, let's say you're not on your own either way. Like, let's say I'm at a level here. I feel like I obviously I want to learn from whoever's above me. I would hope that they would want to help me move up. Yeah. But likewise, even though someone is green coming into a company, I feel like we all have something to learn from each other. We all have different experiences. We have different experiences. Yeah. We, we, 
you never know what someone can contribute to your life, you Absolutely. know, on any level, whether yeah. it's personal, whether it's business, but it all adds up. And I feel like that is the kind of growth, you know, that, that we all need to kind of help each other. It's like, it literally to me, it takes, it takes a village, like in every aspect of my life, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It takes a village. It's, it's, it's a lot, you know, they talk about motherhood. It takes a village, but it also takes a village. And I spoke a little bit about this at the event where um, building a business also takes a village where yes. it's, no one's putting it, no one's raising that baby, you know, whether it's a business or an actual human besides yeah. you, it's your blood, sweat, and tears. It's you making those decisions. It's your gut. It's all those things, but yeah. you can't do those things without the support of other people. And it makes it so much easier to do those things when you've got someone cheering you on and supporting you and helping you and giving you advice and like just bouncing out ideas off of it's like, yeah. you know, my kid won't take formula and this mom's like oh well did you try this did you try that did you try this bottle did you like and you're like okay now I have like a handful of things to now try to try to fix the the problem and it's the same thing with the business yeah. and also yeah. like you know who did you use for your website like did you love them like because like maybe that's just like I don't need to search 10 million sites for a website designer I can just use you because who you ever you use because I trust you and like you're my homie so let's yeah. exactly those so much recommendations easier. by a friend are key <laughs> yeah literally I <laughs> you know? I yeah it makes it easier so yeah that's like a huge and, and I, I hope that's what everyone takes from networking in general and the networking at my events is that they meet their tribe and their support system and people cheering them on and so I remember the um the event that I went to you had tried something new which was almost like a speed dating right like speed networking yeah. type of a thing but uh -huh. you've had different formulas that you've tried in the past so like uh -huh. do you mind walking us through like what people <laughs> can expect when they go to one of your events no matter how it's formatted like what what's what's the vibe what you know why what makes your events different sure so my events are different I think because a they're super fun and high energy right like I'm, I'm leading that pack with that energy so um always that and and I I do want everything to have a fun flair I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable like we talked about like they don't have someone to talk to um so like my large networking events they always have vendor tables like you said so you can wander you never have to worry about standing alone because the vendors want to talk about their product and you want to yeah. talk to someone yeah and and that helps. It makes it a little bit more fun. Um, also, at my networking events, I usually do like a fun photo booth or yeah. an activity. You know, we all love a social media moment. Um, great backdrop, selfie opportunities. And then I do a speaker panel. So I'd like for everyone to leave either inspired or with some sort of applicable information that they can apply to their business. And, um, you know, they feel like they, they gain something and maybe it's just insight or personal growth or like a new thought or an idea. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone takes something different from a speaker panel. Um, so I always try to do that. And then um, a little team break, team connecting activity, because even though I think everyone comes to meet people, sometimes it's just nice to be forced into that a little bit more. So Get out um, of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. It's good to kind of shake it up. <laughs> yep. And so I did, I did speed networking. I'll, usually I do groups um, and then there's questions within the groups, but this time I tried speed networking, which was fun. It's not going to go down as my favorite thing I've tried or right. the biggest success. Um, a lot of people messaged me. I put out something on Instagram afterwards where I was like, I this remember. is what I tried yeah. and I learned a lot. And this is what I learned. And even when I posted that people were like I loved it what this was great and I was kind of like <laughs> I've literally been like this like behind the speed networking thing the whole time yeah yeah, yeah. um but it worked <laughs> it worked for people people had fun I had a little bit of fun it's hard to manipulate 150 women in oh, yeah. 50 people <laughs> I was like talking and it was it's, it's hard to manage but um <laughs> I, I learned a lot I learned yeah. so much and I think some people it did resonate with. So, but that's all that matters, right? Yeah. It's going to resonate with some people and some people might find the speed networking more useful for them, you sure. know, than the groups. Maybe sure. they feel that they can, you know, practice their elevator speech a little bit more. And by the end of it, like, oh, that was my goal is to get really good at my elevator speech, you know, and yeah. 
they did it. <laughs> so yeah. you never know. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> so what has been like yeah. one of your biggest challenges so far? Having started business socialistas, like what what do you feel has been one of the biggest, you know, things you hurdles for you? I think um, a constant hurdle that we all face and something we talked about even like before we started recording is just um, the professional pivots, as I call them. It's kind of like, you know, we're all trying new things and um, pivoting along the way. We're changing our focus and we're trying different offerings. And, um, you know, I it's challenging to know what your audience wants, all of our audiences, how to please the people, how to provide right. value, how to price the value. Yeah. Um, that for me, and actually I listened to a podcast recently and they were talking about how if you're standing still in business, like you're failing and how what you should always be doing is changing and ebbing and flowing and pivoting. And even though that's so difficult and so out of your comfort zone, if you're just like staying stagnant, doing the same thing over and over again, you're, you're eventually just gonna start going down. Right. Right. Um, and that was powerful for me because- It is, yeah. It's good to hear for me too, because of yeah. what we were talking about, because we're, tra- we're in that moment right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so powerful for me because I feel like, you feel like you want to coast. Yeah. You know, I think what we're all trying to do. Yeah. We're trying to just like, get it. You know, we're always trying the different things and to just get it and nail it. And, um, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard knowing what's working and changing and then what to change it to, what to price it at. Like, these are all like the things that all business owners, especially entrepreneurs really go through. So that's my, yeah, I hear you. The, it, pricing it out and everything too. Like that's a big thing. I feel like pr- it co- the, the way that you cost things out for people, um, especially can be a very uncomfortable subject, yeah. you know, and, and are they going to be okay with this? Are they not going to be okay? Will they understand? Will they find the value in what I'm doing? And yep. there comes, and, and that's all like, I, you know, not necessarily fear of success, but just it's that fear of, am I going to lose everything that I, that I just built, you know, yeah. Yeah. but I feel like Absolutely. people who understand your mission and who appreciate what you're doing are going to back you up and are going to understand. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of building a business, you know, and, um, at the end of the day, everyone has to eat. Like we all get it. We're all, <laughs> yeah. we're all here to help each other, but you know, it's a business and yeah we might have to get a little uncomfortable in order to reach that other level of success that we want. In my mind, anyone, you know, who is out there, who understands your, your, your mission and all the output that you're, that you're doing, like they will back you up. They'll support you and they'll understand. And you will never know if you don't take that step. You right. know? This is, the, this is the stuff I tell myself. <laughs> I tell myself too. doesn't make it easy. <laughs> Actually, um, I'm, I'm working on a workshop right now um, for May 18th. This is not meant to be a total plug, but also on, on no, what you plug. were saying. Yeah, is I have, uh, I'm working on a, not working on, I am hosting a um, workshop. It's a Master Your Money workshop. It's on May 18th um, at yeah. J.B. Percival in Fairfield. And kind of where I got this idea is really like, so my strong suit is connecting people, throwing events, confidence, being a social maven, um, dancing, cooking. I have all these things that I'm really good at, but what I'm not really good at necessarily are all the money conversations. Right. And I find that, you know, we're not all great, you know, at everything. So, um, I'm working with, and that's okay. (laughs) That's part of life and business. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm doing this workshop with Sophia of the balanced budget, where we're, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're going to imp- empower people to be able to have confident money conversations and know your worth, how to ask for it and what to do after you get the money in terms of like balancing and budgeting and bookkeeping and all of these things. So yeah. it, that's like, that's like another thing for me. That's like really hard is 
you know, because I worked for corporate for so long where it was like, you know, it was just like direct deposit and they basically tell you what to do and they take this out for your 401k and that for the FSA and like, you just like, health insurance, like everything, right? Everything. All these things. Right. <laughs> and so here I am over here, like my husband's trying to talk to me about finances on my own. I know. You know, like, I know, you know, I feel like I'm in the same boat as you. Like, I feel like I'm always, when it comes to like the budgets and stuff, I'm always like, Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why I did that real I, I was like with the numbers you get it like he can think and like process things so fast and he's and he can just come up with the numbers and blah blah I'm like yeah. okay like I I buy it okay yeah. <laughs> but that's I'm a creative have soul have, yeah exactly exactly yeah and we're all we all have our strengths but that is something just because I don't understand or understand it as much as I want to or uh, can process things the same way as my husband can or whatever, doesn't mean that I don't want to. So I love that you're doing workshops like sure. this because it does go beyond networking. It's how do you run your business and how do you run yeah. it confidently? So at every yeah. you know event that you have, for example, you mentioned you have a panel, right? Yeah. You have a spe- do you usually theme it a certain thing whenever you- I like a theme. theme. You like a theme? I like a theme, you know? Yeah. I think that, that works girl. too. It focuses it. Yeah, it focuses <laughs> it, gives me like a little bit more of a focus on questions. And I feel yeah. like it's fun. I don't know. I'm, I'm like that. You know, I like a theme. I like a matching. I like alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> big lights. <laughs> you just, I like big lights and the color pink and leopard. You know, that's just. I love you it. You gotta embrace it, you know? Like, it's just, I am who I am. Own so Own it. I love it. Yeah, I'm excited about that event. I want to try to go to that money one as well, the budgeting one at J.B. Percival, because yeah. I love it there too. Yeah, who doesn't love that great cocktail? <laughs> Let's have some cocktails and talk money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, also, that's the thing is like, I really want to empower women, not just to go out there and do these businesses and have these businesses and connect with each other, but like empowerment around finances, I think is so important. And I feel like it's like this old school mentality that like guys take care of all the money. And like, I'm right. 200% guilty of this. I'm not trying to, front, no. like I'm not. but I want women to feel that same feeling and step into their own ownership around finances. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, it can happen to anyone to be, you know, yeah. and some women might not have like anyone in their lives that can assist them with something sure. like that, you know, women or men, whatever, like yes. business owners don't, aren't, are sometimes on their own. And yeah. so, and that's like what entrepreneurs do. Like we said, like when you're part of a corporation, they handle everything, you know, yeah. like so one of the biggest things, I remember one of my first um, conversations when um, I went off on my own, cause I come from a, a, a agency background or I have a graphic design background when I left the agency world, the first thing was like, oh my gosh, like I have to um, think about my own health insurance. I have to put money aside for that. I have to think about like literally taxes, tax money, like everything. Taxes. I'm like, stuff that was automatically done for me. I then had to like consciously stop with every paycheck, everything that I got, save for this, save for that, you know, put money aside for that and don't touch it. <laughs> like yeah. it, it's 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 something you have to learn to do and um I feel like this this Q&A thing that you're going to have going on is going to be crucial because yeah. you know it's setting yourself up for success and mm-hmm. if this is a, a, a like a weak point for you then it's absolutely something you should consider absolutely yes. yeah yeah, love it, Ashley. <laughs> so, so, where do you see Business Socialistas going now? Do you have a, a like a plan? Do you have anything like moving forward where you're like, oh, I would really love this to evolve to that, something? I mean, um, I think for now, I just want to focus on my one-on-one coaching. I think yeah. that's like the next step for me is to kind of like bring that more to to light yeah. and to the my business Um, and more events, more um, workshops, more resources for women in business, for sure. More connections, more community. And I'm not sure. I've thought about the idea of a membership. Yeah. 
um, kind of like as a way for people to kind of connect a little bit closer and have this like smaller VIP society of yeah. socialistas that can help each other and get more um, workshops and opportunities for that type of group. But I, I don't know. I'm, hey, I'm, still, I'm big... still working it out in my, yeah. in my head. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's not something you just jump into. That's something that takes a lot of thought. So that's awesome though. And I don't want to do it unless it's going to be the best. So, <laughs> you know, at least that's how you plan. So yeah, um, that's awesome. Thanks. That's so exciting, Ashley. You've, you've accomplished a lot, I feel like, in just a short period of time. Like we were talking this like launch, like 2021, like a, year, a little over a year, a year and a half, right? Yeah. When did Anna Fairfield Minute start? Oh my God. So <laughs> IFM was end of 2020. We were talking about it. Chris came to me. I was like, just, you know, just doing some design work. And he came into the office and he's like, I have an idea. And because he was just sick of the, the chatter, you know, all the negative out there. Yeah. And he's like, I really want to be a part of the solution. I need, and I, I have this. So he had this name. He wanted to do something with it. You know, he wanted to start where he could, which is in his community. Yeah. Um, and like we, I mean, we encompass Fairfield County, like it really isn't just Fairfield, Connecticut, it's Fairfield County, you know, but it's how, how can we take a hold of what feels like is unraveling all around us and just, yep. you know, bring happiness, bring goodwill, you know, and, and see if we can make that snowball within our community. And so literally that happened, the conversations were like in maybe October, November of 2020. And we published our first, at that time, it was a newspaper in March of 2021. Wow. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's quick. <laughs> quick. Like, it was crazy. I love that. Thought, like, oh, it'll just be a nice little thing. Let's see if people like it. We think it's a cute idea. Yeah. Yeah. And the response was awesome and here we are like people who like we were hearing everything we're like what are you talking about this is a digital world why are you printing you know and it's like all this stuff um but we felt it was necessary to give people something tangible even if it was a newspaper it just something to be like this is mine and this is bringing me happiness and i'm feeling connected to others even though i'm quarantined at home you know um, it was building those connections yeah. that, that was so important to us. And that's why we felt like we wanted to, you know, get to know the people in our community, like you, you know, like yeah. everyone, like get to know your neighbor, get to know the person that runs that business, you know, just because they have a brick and mortar spot doesn't mean that they they're swimming in it or that they have everything figured out that they're yeah. not suffering. You know, how many businesses have we seen that closed, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it's, it's horrifying, you know, or people that had to pivot from corporate jobs. Maybe they got laid off. Maybe they got, you know, whatever the circumstance was, they had to reinvent their lives. And that takes a lot of courage, you know, that takes a lot of courage to even imagine that you could have another life, you know, than what you had for 15 years, right? Yeah. Doing something yeah. completely different. And we just wanted to celebrate that. And it was just awesome to see how everyone just embraced it. And now we're like, all right, so this little, this little thing is actually a business. And now we're going to have to like treat, treat it, it as such, such right. <laughs> <laughs> and figure this out. And, and yeah. we've just been lucky. And again, you talk about, you know, it, it takes a village in business. It really does. Like we have all of our contributors, our people from our community of all ages. You know, we have at the time high school students, now college students, um, as well as, you know, people who are accredited writers, bloggers, like, but there are neighbors, you know? Yeah. And I love that people want to be involved in things that, that do good at the end of the day. And it, I feel like it just kind of, um, it shows, what the community is asking for. It shows what people really need in their lives, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's like a like the dad jokes that we do, you know, or whether it's a silly reel that you put out and you're, you know, just goofing yeah. off, you know, can't, people need that, you know? And, yeah. and 
And that's the response that we love to get is just like, you know, why didn't you post this today? We were looking forward to it. Or, well, you know, I, I love that because that shows me people are paying attention. People are seeking out good things. And, um, well, I, that is there. what I love most about in a Fairfield minute as a whole is the oh. positive, like the positive news. What's yeah. only good news or what's, what's your news? good news is always good news. Good news is always great. Or like, yeah, no, we don't, we don't we charge our readers. Like, why should we charge our readers for something that should just be a part of their lives naturally? You know, that's yeah. how we, that's how we look at it, and it, I, I feel like it's working. <laughs> and I feel like news, like that word news, has turned so negative. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's, it's like news. It's like I, I can't hear the news right now. Like, I, like my husband's like, I'm done with the news. Like, yeah. But that is what news has turned into is like this like heavy overbearing feeling where yeah. you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Do like in terms of like, I don't know what to do for bigger pictures like Ukraine or like, I don't know if I should send my kids to school or like, what's like, there's so many oh heavy my. feelings associated with the news now. I love that your news is positive. Like it's just, it's uplifting news. Yes. Which, yes. Oh, I'm glad you said law. So you see it. Yes. That's exactly the goal. That is a hundred percent the goal because, yeah. you know, we, it, it's, um, when we allow like, you know, the rest of the, the media groups out there are, you know, filled with whatever they're filled with and they can be very polarizing. They can be very emotional and that can weigh on you. Yeah. So, and, and it can be paralyzing. And so yeah. we want to kind of disrupt that and be like, oh, there's something else that you can focus on. And honestly, like, what a better thing to focus on than um, the community around you. Like, yeah. it, it, like, I, like I always say, it just helps you remember why you love living where you live. Like, And this is the best place in the world. Yeah. We are obsessed with living here. Right? We're like in yes. this little great bubble. Like, it's like, it's there's so much to enjoy here. here. <laughs> like, let's enjoy it, you know? Yeah. And let, yeah. It's not about competition. It's about community. It's about yeah. helping each other. So... Yeah, I love that. And I love that your that business socialistas gets that too. Like you you're you're bringing people together, you're helping people face their challenges, face their fears in order to help them in their journey to success. And I think that that's that's priceless. I think yeah. that's priceless. And I think it, it's wonderful that you're putting yourself out there as well and not being shy about it, like showing people that you can be yourself and be successful. Thanks. So Thank I you. applaud you, Miss Ashley. I, I applaud you too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we we both have that positive spin on our on yeah. our business model, which I think is nice and good synergy. I think it's nice, and I think it's also you know again like it it it's honest, and I think people can read honest and genuine, yeah. you know, and and if if you can't come from a from an honest place, then that that will always be like a, a barrier people can read it you know people can see it and they can feel uh, it no absolutely a hundred percent um so tell our our viewers please how they can find you what's the best way to contact miss ashley um i'm at business.socialistas on instagram yeah. or business-socialistas.com you can DM me or email me. I'm super active on Instagram. So yeah. it's a great place to find me. Awesome. Guys, yes. If you need any business advice, coaching, you want to attend one of the networking events that are coming up, please reach out to Ashley because she's, as you can see, a very awesome person. So Thank easy you. to talk to. <laughs> Should not be intimidated at all. <laughs> I love that about you, Ashley. Like I really do. Um, and we're lucky to have you in our community. So thank you so much for everything you do. And thanks for taking the time today to sit with us, me. Well, thank you so <laughs> much for having me. You. And for your friendship and welcoming nature here in town. Like um, even before yeah. this, I, I see you all the time and we're always like giggling because we run into each other. I know. I really saw you again. Yeah. Like, Sledding, like anyway, yeah. we bump into yeah. each other everywhere. It's great. I know. I, I love, love it. That. I know for having me and for all your kind words today. I really feels nice. So thank you.
Oh, thank you. Awesome. Well, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to our seventh episode. Ooh, awesome. Lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. It's my favorite <laughs> number. <laughs> awesome. Um, and please follow Ashley at business.socialistas on Instagram. All right. Thanks so much, Ashley. Oh, thank you so much, Paula. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.